on two wheels this week, a slight change of plan, no 400 phaser as promised. But instead I visit a bike show organised by a primary school. Wayne gets filthy dirty at a hill climb and Jeff meets the man who rides a fire blade with stabilisers. Now if I said we were at a bike show, you would maybe think of the NEC. You'd perhaps think of the big Rock and Blues custom show or maybe the big show in Peterborough, the big BMF rally. Well, none of them. This is St Andrew's Motorcycle Show. St Andrew's is a little school in Radcliffe just outside Manchester. And this is the car park of Radcliffe Borough Football Club. And this is their bike show. It takes a bit of putting together an event like this and you'd expect a big team of, of fellas, I suppose, because fellas organise most bike things. But down to the ladies, I think, this time, mainly. Mrs Bowes, your head mistress of... Is that head mistress, head teacher? Head teacher, we Head say, teacher, yeah, right, yeah. I do apologise. Of St Andrew's School. That's right. Right, most schools would have a garden party. Yeah. You have a bike show. Yeah. Um, so, so why? Well, we're having a bike show because it brings in lots and lots of different people and uh -huh. we want to raise money for our school buildings. We have to raise some of the money every year to refurbish and improve our school buildings. Uh -huh. And Mrs Gray decided a few years ago that this would be a good way of... Uh, organising and getting some extra cash for the school and it's grown it's our third year now yeah. third motorcycle show and it's bigger and better than ever it's fantastic i think it's great so carol you you organize this but you, you somebody told me before you're not really into bikes i can't stand bikes you can't stand bikes. bikes you can't say that well i belong to a biking family so my father would shoot me if i told him the truth <laughs> what i really thought and the other half but um no but you're good at organizing things well i used to do it for a living full time right travel the world doing seminars world conferences study tours that type of Thing, so yeah. I've got a bit of experience in putting things together. Yeah, well, you've and done with a, the help of the committee, we're getting there. You've done there. a good job. Well, the committee, that's where you come in, Mandy. Yes. Chairman of the... Chairman, joint chairperson. Action, chairperson of the yeah. Joint Action Group or something. Jo joint Action Committee, Joint Action yes. Committee, yeah. right. Okay, so yeah. is it a nightmare organising a bike show like this? Uh, not with people like Carol and Mrs <laughs> Bowes' support and the rest of the committee. We're a small committee. We raise a lot of money for that school right. and we work very hard and it's all for the good of the children. We really exactly. need to increase the capacity in that building for yeah. the children because the, the classrooms are small and outdated slightly so we want to get the best facilities we can. Now, if you're going to get married you generally uh, book a white Rolls Royce or a big white limo or something like that but um, you can now book a bike or a trike actually Susan. Trike. This is your trike it's a, Susan it's... and Brian. What is it Susan tell me? It's a V8. A Rover Desperate V8. Desperate Dan V8. Desperate Dan's built this has he? Correct. Famous for his trikes. Yes. No. Brian, I would have expected you to be riding this, but Susan rides it, doesn't she? Uh, I'm the only one that can open the garage door. <laughs> so by the time I've opened the garage door, pulled it out, locked the door, Susan's on it. Right, I see. I'm so relegated you, to the back. So you do weddings on this? Correct, yes. Is it popular? Have you got lots of work? Um, not at the moment, because we've only just gone into it. Right. We did it on a show at... Um, it's been in West Orton Bike Show, and it's also been in another show. And... For the West Orton Bike Show, we decided to dress it up as a trike just for novelty value. Right, and somebody said, I like and that. And somebody said, I like that. Can I have a card? And I didn't have any. So, so you I thought. Got into it by accident, really? Correct, yeah. Right. You've ridden this here today, Susan, right? Yeah. You've come on a, an outfit, right? Oh, a monster. A monster. Absolute monster. You're, uh, this you're, this you're is a, nothing. You're a fairly, you're a big guy, if you don't mind me saying what so. What are you trying to say? So, so, no, I'd expect, you know, big guy, big bike. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to have a look at your little outfit. You can come and look at my monster, by all means. I think we're going to have a look. Let's go and show you what Brian's arrived on today. Now here it is, a monkey bike. Brian. The beast. The beast. Look at the size of it. It's a tiny little thing, a little Honda monkey bike with a sidecar. Well, people actually say that monkey bikes aren't exciting to ride. Right. Put a sidecar on it. Adrenaline, <laughs> pure adrenaline. Ability. We must, well, we must say, must point out that this isn't yours, is it? I don't know. It was a friend of ours. It's in the Bank Union Tricar Club. Uh, right. It's actually stored in our garage, so we had to pull this out to pull the trike out. To pull the other one out. So yeah. Susan nicked the trike, so I came on this. Does he know you've come on this? Does he mind um, you riding it? He doesn't mind his riding no. it. No, it's John Crompton. He's uh, he's a market trader, so he can't be here today. But how does it go with you on it? I'm not being funny, like, but I mean, what they're, not, they're, not very, that again, they're not very powerful anyway, are they? But I mean, I don't know. You must get honest, some funny looks. Yes, especially when you got the V8 about 10 feet behind you. Yeah. But, yeah it came me about 40 miles an hour. Well, let me just show you something. Watch this here. Brian's a big, a big lad. 
So in the side yeah. <laughs> a bag of snow to keep it on the floor, I'm loving it. It'd be up in the air that, wouldn't it? Well, I told you it was exciting. I bet it's exciting. A scooter around Britain, it says there. That's exactly what David Cohn has done here. You've right. been all around the country on a scooter. On a scooter. Keeping as close to the coast as we can. Right. How many miles was that? 4,363. Wow. A scooter wouldn't be everybody's choice of, of machine to do that sort of trip on. What, was there any reason for a scooter? Yeah, I ride a scooter. Right. So you know, I had a scooter back in the fifties. Yeah. When I was a, when I was young, <laughs> and uh, after I took retirement, retired early, I bought another one. Yeah. Or went back to riding a scooter again, mainly for short runs. Mm -hmm. But I fell in love with it so much that the runs got longer and longer. How much did you raise? It's still coming in, but we've raised over three thousand pounds so far. Wow. What's that for? A hospice or something? A local stand? hospice, yes. Right. And Catherine's Hospice, up at Lostock Hall, which is just south of Preston. Right. That's is that where you started from, Preston? Yeah. And did, which way did you go? We went clockwise, right. up through the far coast, Cumbria, round all the way around Scotland, yeah. down the east coast, along the south coast, and wow. back up through Wales. You must be an expert now on the best biking roads in Britain then, mustn't you? You must know them all. Oh yes indeed. The yeah. uh, best roads are in Scotland probably. In yeah. the Highlands especially, you'd be surprised. Yeah. You'd think the roads would be rubbish. They're not. They're very good. Right. Yeah. And the worst roads are Merseyside. Is that right? Uh, without doubt. Really? Well, at least which I encountered. Right. Spoken from a man who knows. Now most of the bikes have been ridden here today, but some of them haven't been ridden. This one certainly wouldn't be ridden because it's an enormous drag bike owned by Ken Thorne, Ken and Val. You do the bikes at your place, Ken. Yes, we do. You do the clothing, Val. I do, yeah. The perfect relationship. Ken, why do you come to a show like this? Because you can't ride it here. No, um, really to promote the shop and to promote drag racing, right. that anybody with a street bike can go along and, have a go. and race. And right. from then, we all started that way and we progressed. So right. we're really trying to show people that they can have a go, all whatever right. and, bike they've got. And this is your bike. This is a funny bike. Yes. Right, so what is it exactly? It's a basically a 1428 Kawasaki, well, it's Kawasaki GPZ engine. Right. Built up to a 1428cc, nitrous injected. Do you get a lot of interest? Do you get people coming up to you about asking you loads of questions at a place like yeah, this? Yeah, we Because this yeah. is only a lo yeah. little local show. Yeah, yes we do. So yeah. it's worth your coming, isn't it? A lot of people haven't seen this type of machinery. No, so they don't really know what it is, do they? We're trying really to get more to... interest yeah. in drag racing in general. Right. Right. Well, you, are we going to get any rolling burnouts on the car park this afternoon? Is no, that we, we did ask that, but they won't, they won't <laughs> let us because they're um, right in the bars, ripping the concrete up, so <laughs> it doesn't look like we're going to it today. So it's going back home in the van? Yeah, but it's out next week at York. Right, well, good luck. It's getting very noisy here now at Radcliffe uh, Football Club because the band's tuning up right behind where you are. But there's a load of money here, which has come from the Goldwing Owners Club, Langs and Lakes branch. Correct. Russ, right, Russ, what's going on here? Well, what it is, we, the Langs and Lakes Goldwings, go out each year we collect for charity this right. year it's the Macmillan nurses okay. and this is the check for so far this year 685 pounds as you can see and that's raised by just displaying the bikes and letting people sit on them right and Dave you're you're here to collect it on yes. behalf of Macmillan, Macmillan nurses can't ever say mm -hmm. it um, you get a lot of money from bikers I've only just joined Macmillan right. Cancer really in the last month mm -hmm. so this is my first trip to meet the bikers right. but i'm looking forward to meeting many more they're not a bad bunch are they they are a very generous bunch. i think you'll be getting loads of checks like this from bikers because they're the most so. generous people in the world yeah there you go give him the money russ cheers mate it's Smash all it. yours thank you very much russ thank you you know the great thing about having a sidecar well a few great things you can take three people out with you one on the bike one in the side maybe even two in the sidecar four people yeah, people in here don't get wet but the best thing of all about having a sidecar is if it's like this one you can have your own fridge look at that it's got a fridge in the back with loads of beer cheers jimmy don't hey, mind here put that back you're not having that <laughs> it doesn't matter really scouser you see <laughs> well, some people go to great lengths to make their bikes look beautiful and some people even build their own bikes but brian here you've not quite built the bike but you've built the sidecar built the sidecar yeah right well, me would have done well, well just tell me about the sidecar first what's it made out of plywood uh, and fiberglass. Right. And, and the wood's still there, it's still under. Is it still underneath there, yeah? Yeah. Still under. Fiberglass, yeah. And and you, now the painting, this is what, what interests me because it's it's beautifully finished. What's it painted with? Tell us. You know these small aerosol cans? Yeah. 48 of them. Wow, 48 cans, the little yeah. shaky jobs with the yeah. ball burning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you painted the bike as well, you sprayed the bike. The lot, I stripped a lot. The finish is absolutely gamble. fantastic. And another thing, this wood, all this beautiful polished wooden dashboard here. Chester drawers. A Chester drawers, he's making this up, a Chester drawers. Yeah. Have you got a piece in your top yeah. box? Just grab us that yeah. piece out of there. 
I can't believe that anyone would go to this. Like, you can buy this stuff, you know. You can just go and buy it. You know, it makes it. Look at that. A chunk of wood with it, even with the dovetails yeah. on it. So that, all this all started that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And a lot well, of a lot of work. You know, you always spot celebrities at these events, and I've just spotted Wayne. Could I have your autograph, please, Mr. Kershaw? Thank you. Look at that. Cheers, Wayne. Oh. <laughs> Well, as we know, there's a competition going on here today. People uh, vying to win the various trophies for the different classes of bikes. And the two gentlemen with the thankless task, I have to say, of deciding who takes what home are Dave and Les. So, Dave, what are you looking for? Is it difficult well, to judge? It's it's easier outdoors, actually, than indoors. Yeah. Because you can get back from the bikes and see the general character of the bike from a few yards away. Mm. And if it doesn't impress you at a distance, it's not going to impress you at all. Right. OK, I suppose the, the most sought after award at any show is best overall, which is why we're stood next to this beautiful 1961 yeah. Triumph Bonneville. So, Les, perhaps you tell me, what why Why did you think this? What's so special about it? It's gorgeous, I know. But no, it's got all the right things yeah. on it. It's got all the right parts on it. Yeah. You know, it's not had it. any any bits added that shouldn't be. Right. And it's been rode here as well. What you see is what you get, that's Somewhere. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's best overall in the show. That, right. That's what we think is best overall. Yeah. It's well presented. The finish is superb on it. Well, I have to agree, and I actually know the bloke who rides this, you know. <laughs> He's a mate of mine, and, and believe me, this, this is a credit to your judging skills now, because this, I don't know whether you know, this particular machine won best overall bike at the Manchester Bike Show way back in January. Very good. Yeah. I'm not surprised so looking at the quality of it. Yeah. It struck us as soon as we looked at it yeah. as being outstanding. Well, it is, and I'm sure it'll be dead chuffed. <laughs> well, that's all from this year's St Andrews Bike Show. But after the break, Wayne goes on a hill climb and Jeff meets a man with a very special fire blade. I can't believe it, can you, Ray? There's me. I present a motorcycle programme. It involves riding on two wheels, and I end up walking up a hill. But then again, I think I'd rather be walking up than riding up like these lads. There's more than 150 of these barmy twits riding up this hill. I can tell you it's an awful long way, and it's fairly steep as well. Yes, and it's the Red Marley Hill Climb. Well, it was founded by one of the most famous motorcyclists of all time, a guy called Len Vale Onslow, MBE even, who was featured only just recently on This Is Your Life, and rightly so, because he is definitely a star motorcyclist. The guy, even to this day, of 100 years old this year, still rides a motorcycle. Now, he found this hill 75 years ago and thought, what a good do, we'll see if we can get to the top. They made a competition of it, and they've done it for a number and number of years, but they did have a bit of a layoff, and then a whole bunch of enthusiasts decided to get together and help out and reorganise the event, and they've done so, and today's the day. So the year 2000, and Len Vale Onslow celebrating 100th birthday, well, what more could you ask for? Perfect time to run the event. Young lad, <laughs> well, that must have been me dad and most of them. Eh? As soon as you get a throw in the end, you can't stop him. Can you believe it? You're just cameraman, you make me laugh. There's about 150 blokes around here riding these bikes. Most of them over the age of 40, and lo and behold, the cameraman catches a young lady in the middle of the path. I said to you, over there is a red bike that pulls like a tractor. Not the flipping red tractor, this is beautiful Rickman Matisse. Now there's a devil of a number, isn't it, eh? 666. 
And there's two bikes with that number on because there's one rider for both bikes. This bike over here, a 1942 engined Harley Davidson. Now, is that not just unbelievable? Eh? A lot of engineering work gone into this. And would you know that this is the only one used in motocross? And in this case, today, hill climbing as well. And these bikes of every shape and size, including one to fit me. Look at that. And I don't need a set of steps to get on that baby either. So what type of machines are used in this event? Well, I can tell you machines from the past because in actual fact, there isn't a bike out there that wasn't produced after the year 1970. And there is one out there that was produced in 1927. And I bet our uncle Jeff Road tested that when it was first introduced, honest. The fact is, it is a, a sort of event that is from the past. It's a classic event. It's run by the AJS and Maxless Owners Club. Well, there's a start, isn't it? That's a bike from the past. And the people who are using the bikes on the hill climb, many of which probably rode when it was first introduced and found many, many years ago, because there's some elderly gentlemen out there riding those bikes, and I have a great admiration for them, I can tell you, because I wouldn't be seen dead riding up that hill. It's a fearsome looking hill, it's a long one, and it's very, very steep. Well, you can't go to a classic motorcycle event anywhere, even if it's a horrible, muddy event, without seeing a lovely line of very, very shiny road bikes that have been ridden here, but they still got dirty. Now, take note, you modern speedway lads, who spend an absolute fortune in painting your desirable machines to look beautiful, because this was introduced in the late 40s. And I tell you what, you've got a long way to go before you get a bike as good looking as this. And of course the advantage with chrome is you can get a good reflection and you can do your air in it. It's a spot of dirt on there actually. I just don't think it's fair. So okay, so I did the odd donut, and I did a wheelie or two and a stopper. So I fell off and broke the odd fairing. But I don't see why they should have me walk everywhere. I should at least be able to have a ride of a bike every now and again. It's been said that motorcycling is a drug. It's addictive. And once you're a biker, you're always a biker. Even a severe disability doesn't deter some people even when the machine in question is a Honda Fireblade. Now here we've got a blade with some very unusual additions. Very visible, there are a couple of stabilizers. Stabilizers, you might say. Well, this gentleman here, Peter Griffiths, he's disabled, certainly less able than me in a big way, really, yeah. Peter. Yeah. So your bike, you've been silly enough, if you don't mind me saying, <laughs> to put stabilizers on it and everything else, because you can't get on the bike yourself, can you? Yeah, I can actually get on, it's just riding it once I'm on it is a problem. Yeah. I broke my back in a bike accident 10 years ago, so my paralysis is complete from the chest level. So the main difficulty in converting the bike was to get the uh, gear shifter up onto the handlebars, which is the switch on the uh, right hand bar, Right. to get the rear brake lever beneath it, and have a switch on the left hand bar, um, ahead of the switch gear, which operates the stabiliser mechanism. Yeah. So I. Uh, so you retract these like a plane's undercarriage once yeah, you're on the road? Exactly yeah, exactly like that, yes. Yeah. So uh, once I'm underway, let the clutch out in first gear, reach about six, seven miles an hour, flip the switch to retract them, and just ride like any other solo bike until it's time to stop again. And what about your foot? Well, they're not foot pegs, they're like foot shoes, aren't they, really? They are, because the other problem is I can't keep my, I have no control over my lower limbs, so my legs won't stay on the bike. So I put my toes into a, a toe, secure a toe cap, socket, yeah. and there's a locking pin yeah. which locates in the heel of my boots, which have been specially made. So my legs can't come off, I can't fall off, and I'm safe and secure. Good, great. We're safe as, as secure as I can be. <laughs> and, and what happens at the end of your ride? What, what do you do then? How, how do you get off it then? 
Well, when I, when I get off, it's um, not too bad getting off into the wheelchair, but except I can't feel when I land on the wheelchair. So I need somebody standing behind holding it to make sure I don't land on the tarmac. But if, if I can get on independently, but getting off is more, more You could probably problem. do with that helicopter hovering ahead, couldn't you? Oh, really? yeah, I, I can't afford one right now, but I'm sort of that. I'll pass the hat around afterwards so we can come up with. But look, Peter, when I said to you, silly, I wasn't being sort of disrespectful yeah. to you, but I mean, lots of people think motorbikes are dangerous in the first place, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Let alone you doing what you're doing now. I mean, what you're such a bike enthusiast, you just couldn't leave bikes alone, I take it. I, I couldn't leave bikes alone because when I broke my back, uh, I knew within one hour of the impact the position I'd be in and, and within the next half now we're having discussions about what was attainable with a wheelchair and uh, the one thing that really got to me was the fact that I couldn't use two wheels again. Everybody was going on to uh, trikes and sidecar outfits and I couldn't cope with that prospect and that was the thing that irritated me more than anything. Was it? So um, I set about uh, designing this conversion to... So this um, is part of your get well therapy then? Well it certainly worked, yeah. <laughs> well, one last thing, what made you pick the, the blade then? Because you had your accident on a Yam, didn't you? Yeah, I had a, uh, my accident on a, an FZR 1000 Nexus. I bought yeah. that in '89, and um, it's not very scientific. But whatever bike did well in the Isle of Man production TT, I thought if it's tough <laughs> enough, have have enough in, <laughs> and durable enough to manage that, then that'll do for me. So in '89 it was the Exa, and in '96, uh, uh, '95 it was the Blade. Yeah, hence the Blade. Excellent. And they're, they're pretty reliable anyway. I mean, that's uh, around the world Blade's clocked 175,000, so I've got about 100 and. 73 and a half to go so um, it should see me out excellent well good trips for you okay. anyway yeah Cheers. thanks very much that's all from two wheels for this week but join us next week when you can see what i've been getting up to here because this in case you don't recognize it is assen yes the world famous world-class assen seen at some fantastic races over the years and I'm here for a very, very special track day. 